In this presentation, we will discuss which guidelines and online resources we can use to prepare for FRC PETH microbiology. I intentionally did not divide the presentation for part 1 and part 2, as they are more or less similar. I recommend you also consult the curriculum to see which documents are less important for you, if any. The first document you must download is the curriculum. This is going to be your guide on what to read. Make a list of the topics from the curriculum and then list the resources against the broad topic so that you can ensure nothing is left unprepared. The link to the curriculum should be available below this presentation and microregistrar.com. I recommend using the most recent curriculum published in 2021. Antibiotics You may get many questions on antibiotics. It could be MCQ based on the properties of antibiotics, as the mechanism of action or resistance, or it could be the choice of antibiotics in a particular clinical situation. Short answer questions are also possible, where you could be asked about a specific antibiotic. As such, books are important for this subject. So, which antibiotics you should read? It should be an antibiotic we use in the UK or any novel antibiotic. I do not see much point in reading about an antibiotic, for example, pefloxacin, which we do not use. You can find the antibiotics we use in the British National Formulary or BNF. BNFC is the formulary for pediatric use. BNF will provide you with the names and update you on various properties of the antibiotics, like indications, adverse effects, dose adjustment, etc. You may use the alphabetically arranged treatment summaries, which will give you an overview of the subject with lots of helpful links. Novel or new antibiotics I find the FDA website especially helpful when looking for new antibiotics. Go through the list of antibiotics approved in recent years and make a list for yourself. Antibiotics in development are probably less important than those in use or have been recently approved. Pewtrust website has a list of such pipeline antibiotics. You may find it interesting as a microbiologist even if you are not preparing for the examination. Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency Updates MHRA Send Drug and Device Alerts which is relevant to the UK. You can subscribe to their feed. Vaccines You may get some information on BNF and PHE websites, but the Green Book is the main source of vaccine-related information. You can also use the MCQ book, based on Green Book, which is freely available on the net. Laboratory National SOP The Standard for Microbiology Investigations or the SMI is a wonderful source of laboratory information. NHS laboratory SOPs are adapted from the SMEs. If you are working in an NHS trust and familiar with the local SOPs, you can use it, but if not, use National SMI. If you are an overseas candidate, please use National SMI. The SMI may appear as large documents, but you may not need to read the whole document. You may want to answer some of these questions from these documents. 1. What tests to perform for various clinical situations? 2. Reflex tests. 3. Target organisms. 4. Specific tests and which organisms are positive or negative. 5. How to interpret the result and interpretative comments. 6. Other possible tests like molecular or typing. 7. When and what to inform public health. 8. Safety and quality issues. But, please remember these are not the only questions. There are many other potential areas from where questions could come. For susceptibility testing, we follow UCAST. All the UCAST documents are free on their website. Please do not mix and match UCAST with CLSI. While reading UCAST, ask yourself what could be clinically relevant, the unique aspects of susceptibility tests, intrinsic resistance, 
it may not be possible and necessary to remember the zone sizes or all the minimum inhibitory concentrations. In a future video, we will discuss UCAST documents only. Reference Laboratory Service We send specimens to these reference laboratories for unusual organisms, confirmatory tests, typing, therapeutic drug monitoring, etc. You will find the link to the laboratory handbooks of some reference laboratories. Please have a read of these documents and collect relevant information. Laboratory Safety the best place to find the documents related to lab safety is health and safety executives. You can find three links on microregistrar.com and below this presentation. Some other laboratory-related documents that you can use. ACDP website. Key assurance and performance indicators. The PHE document on laboratory reporting. If you Google NHS Trust Laboratory Safety Manual, you will be able to find some local trust documents as well. If you are an UK infection trainee, I recommend you book a session with Laboratory Quality Manager to learn about laboratory safety and quality. Pay special attention on how to solve problems or resolve issues arising from incidents. Infection Control some examples of infection control topics that you may want to read. 1. Infection control measures like type of isolation, PPE, cleaning, for various infections like C. difficile, TB, measles, chickenpox, meningococcal disease, viral hemorrhagic fever, glycopeptide-resistant enterococcus, carbapine mace-producing enterobacterials. 2. Post-exposure management for infections like PVL staph aureus, meningococcal disease, Haemophilus influenza type B, group A streptococcus. 3. Outbreaks, types, outbreak control team, managing an outbreak. 4. Typing and its role. 5. When to inform infection control team and public health. 6. Hospital water safety, ventilation and decontamination standards, how to troubleshoot a problem for example pseudomonas in the water supply in the intensive care unit. 7. Theatre ventilation. 8. CJD related issues. 9. Sharps or needle stick injury. 10. COVID-19 related infection control measures etc. These are only some example. There are many other issues which can be examined. There is a large amount of infection control resources available on the internet. You may decide to buy a book, but you might get all the information yourself if you want to gather your own resources. EPIC 3. It is the National Evidence-Based Guidelines for Preventing Healthcare-Associated Infections in National Health Service. Another comprehensive guideline is the Scottish National Infection Prevention and Control Manual. The webpage will provide a pathogen A to Z. You can read organism-specific advice and get links to relevant guidance. Healthcare Infection Society is a network of infection control specialists who produce guidelines to prevent healthcare-associated infection. You should check their guidelines. Some of the guidelines are made for MRSA, COVID-19, fecal microbiota transplant, multidrug-resistant gram-negative bacteria, etc health technical memoranda and health building notes. These are the guidelines on the design and engineering aspects of healthcare premises. There are many areas in these guidelines which can be examined. For example, theatre ventilation, decontamination of the endoscope, and the hospital water system issues. You may find an extensive list of HTMs and HBMs on this website. You must read HTMs on water, ventilation and decontamination and any other with infection control issues in them. You may find many NHS trust infection control guidelines by doing a Google search. You may also search based on a particular topic like needle stick injury. Journal articles. There are many infection or microbiology journals are available. It is a good practice for any professional to read eminent journals regularly. For this exam, 
I recommend you must read at least these three journals. The Journal of Infection. The Journal of Hospital Infection. And the Journal of Antimicrobial Chemotherapy. Read at least one year worth of journals going back from your examination date. This page on microregistrar.com is designed to help you with journals. It is designed to auto-update every day with any new article published in these three journals. Unfortunately, it will not give you access to the full article for which the journal demands membership. Guidelines Give preference to the UK guidelines. This is a British exam, and local guidelines are always the best option for you, as the advice are aligned with the UK's practice. If you do not find relevant UK guidelines, look for US or European guidelines. We often use Escape Mid or IDSA guidelines, however, as I previously suggested, you must make sure you adapt the suggestions to the UK practice. Nice guidelines are a must read. NICE website has many sections, like, Guidance, CKS, Evidence Search, Quality Standard, Medical Technological Guidance etc. Some of these are more important than others for the exam. This page on microregistrar.com will provide you with a list of NICE documents. You may use this list to decide which is relevant for you. Healthcare Infection Society's Guidelines page should give you many infection control-related guidelines. British Infection Association Guidelines page is an excellent resource for you. They categorize the guidelines based on organ systems and organisms. Make sure you put all these guidelines in your own file. BASH guidelines should give you an idea of how sexually transmitted diseases and HIV is managed in the UK. Also, read the British HIV Association guidelines for HIV. Clinical Virology Network, or CVN has a guideline page with the guidelines relevant to virology. The guidelines are divided based on the situation or organism. For transplant-related guidelines check British Transplantation Society website, the Health Protection A to Z. This is a vast collection of guidelines, information, data, policies and other related material. This is extremely useful but difficult to navigate. I recommend you make your list, curating topics and links from here, so that you can save some time, but not search every time you open it. There are other British institutes, which produce helpful guidelines, for example, the Community Acquired Pneumonia Guideline by the British Thoracic Society. It is difficult to list all these societies. Whenever you are reading a subject, I suggest you do a quick Google search to see if there are any available guidelines. Books like the Oxford Handbook will also point towards relevant society or national guidelines. You can also take help from websites like guidelines.co.uk. Most UK microbiologists, including me, frequently use these decision support tools. Up to date and BMJ best practice. You can use them, but you may need membership and they often written keeping an US audience in mind. Last but not least you should be able to access UK NHS Trust guidelines by either doing a Google search or via the Microguide app. If you are a UK trainee, read your own trust guideline and also the guideline of your tertiary hospital. Thank you for listening. Please remember this list is not comprehensive. There are many other resources that other trainees may have found useful. Speak to other trainees and discuss on the Facebook group, WhatsApp group, or your local hospital. Speak to your consultant. You may find ideas that will help you prepare better. Best wishes.